In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up VPC endpoints so that you can connect from a private subnet to another service within AWS all through AWS's private network. In a previous video, I set up a custom VPC with a public and a private subnet. And on the public subnet, I put an Nginx reverse proxy that would forward HTTP traffic to a node application that was sitting on a private subnet. And this app just connects to an S3 bucket so that I can see all of the files within my bucket and download them. But right now it's sitting on a private subnet and can't connect to anything. So it can't even connect to that S3 bucket. In a previous video, I showed you how to use a NAT gateway to access anything over the public internet from a private subnet, but since I'm only connecting to an S3 bucket, which is another AWS service, I can use a VPC endpoint to connect directly to that service privately. And there are many endpoints that you can create within a VPC, but one of those is an endpoint to an S3 bucket. So here's my application currently running. The reverse proxy is forwarding traffic to my app and I can see that's working. But as soon as I go to view files from my bucket, it just keeps loading because currently it can't connect to anything outside of the VPC. So I'm gonna to go to the VPC console and I can see my custom VPC right here. So I am gonna scroll down to endpoints and we're gonna add a new endpoint. So here is a list of all the services you can create endpoints for, and you should pay attention to the type here because an interface endpoint will cost money, whereas a gateway endpoint won't cost anything. And there's actually only two different types of gateway endpoints, uh, one for an S3 bucket and one for DynamoDB. All of the other endpoints will come with a charge. So once I've selected S3, the gateway one, because that's the free one, uh, I can select the VPC, so I'm gonna select my custom VPC, and then I select the route table or route tables that I wanna associate this with. So I only wanna be able to connect to my S3 bucket from my private subnet because that's where my application is currently hosted. So I'm only gonna associate this with my private subnet's route table. And then down here, I can grant full access to S3, but I really shouldn't ever leave things that open. So instead, I'm gonna click on this policy creation tool, which will help us actually set up the JSON for this policy. So this type of policy is for an S3 bucket. We are going to allow, because what I need to do is allow my application to list the contents of the bucket, get objects from the bucket, uh, add objects and delete objects. The principle here is what can actually access the bucket. I'm gonna put a star here to say that uh, anything that's able to access this endpoint can uh, access the S3 bucket. Then for actions, I wanna only select the put object, list bucket, get object, and delete object. These are the things that I wanna be able to do on the S3 bucket. Uh, and I have my S3 bucket right here. I'm just gonna look at the properties because I need the ARN. Uh, so I'm gonna copy this and paste it in the generator, there it is. So the list bucket policy is gonna be actually on the bucket itself, so I need to supply that ARN, but I need to add a comma and then the ARN again, slash star, because the get object, put object, and delete object actions will be on specific objects within the bucket, not the bucket itself. So I just need to specify both of those. My resource field is not, I must enter a valid ARN. ARN should follow, use comma to separate multiple values. I must have done, did I do comma space? Yep, there we go, okay. So I'm creating an S3 bucket policy for the VPC endpoint. This isn't a, an AIM policy, this is an endpoint policy. And I'm gonna allow put, delete, list, and get on my bucket and the contents of the bucket. So I can add that statement in there. This is telling me what's going on. Uh, I like the look of that. So I generate the policy and here is the JSON I need. So I need to copy this. I'll close this window and I'll close this window. And back in my endpoint creation page, I'm gonna click custom and paste in that JSON. So now I should be able to access that specific bucket to do these specific things from resources on this subnet. So I'll click create endpoint now and close. And this should be uh, pretty immediate. If I refresh the page now that wasn't working at first, it should be able to connect to my S3 bucket and I can list the contents of the bucket and I can actually view the things within the bucket. So VPC endpoints are great when you need to be able to access AWS services from a private subnet. In this case, it was just for an S3 bucket, but you can use them for pretty much any service within AWS.